Why They Failed, weekly analysis of NMC OzKey results with Nurse Meg and your host, Victoria. Hello and welcome to another week of Why They Failed with IELTS Medical. We're here with Nurse Meg and we're going to be going through the examples for you. Okay, so this one is from the implementation station. The candidate failed to accurately document drug administration and non-administration. The candidate failed to administer any medication and therefore was not able to demonstrate safe dispensing and administration of medications. The rationale for not administering was due to there being no duration date on the prescription chart. This is ongoing regular medication and therefore safe to administer to the patient. The candidate failed to accurately document administration and non-administration of medication. It is important that there is a clear and accurate record of drug administration and non-administration so that there is a clear record of medications administered and non-administered and the rationale for this. In preparation for the reset, the Royal Marsden Manual of Clinical Procedures, the marking criteria, equipment list and reading list on the test centre's webpage. So this feedback is relating to the implementation station and there's some issues with documentation here. So this candidate was not able to accurately document drugs that were either administered or not administered and there was no drugs administered in the station. So it's important to remember in implementation, what you're being assessed on is being able to safely administer and then if required, omit medications. But most importantly, you will need to be able to demonstrate that you can um, administer medications. So you'll be administering at least one. If you get to the end of reading through your MAR chart and there, you think that there is no medications due or to be administered, check again as it's likely that you've made a mistake or you will have made a mistake because there will definitely be at least one medication for you to dispense, if not more. So please ensure that you have checked it carefully. If there's no medications that you found on the first time through, you need to go through again as you would have made a mistake. The medication that wasn't given the rationale from this candidate was because there was no duration or a start date and an end date. But if it's the patient's regular ongoing medication, it's okay if there's not an end date because it's regular medication that they'll continue to take ongoing. And there was documentation issues in that the medication which was not administered was not documented appropriately. So it's important that this documentation is correct so that the next person that comes to look at the MAR chart, it will be clear to them what medications have been given and any medications that weren't given. And it's important that they know why the medication was not given. So for example, if a patient, if you were not going to give medication because a patient was allergic to that, you would want to be coding that a 10 as other and then documenting on the final page that the reason it was omitted was because the patient was allergic. Similarly, you might want to code that the prescription was incorrect or unclear. The codes will be listed for you in the medication administration record, so you don't need to memorize these. You just need to check at the front of the mark chart which code is the most appropriate to use. When you do administer medication, only after the patient has swallowed it, you can then sign it has been administered and the medication administration record will have instructions for what it wants you to document in the box. Usually it's the signature of the nurse who's administering the medication. So we had quite a lot of feedback from the candidate's mental health station. So we're going to um, break it up into parts for you. So the candidate failed to acknowledge or record the main care needs of the patient. The candidate identified that the patient was experiencing suicidal thoughts, but did not identify any major life events or relationships. Failing to acknowledge or record the main care needs may mean that the correct care is not delivered to the patient. So this feedback relates to the assessment station for a mental health nurse. And there were some issues throughout the assessment in how the candidate was able to interact with their patient throughout the assessment. So importantly here, the patient expressed that they're experiencing suicidal thoughts. And it's important that this is treated sensitively with the patient. So we would never recommend asking for any um, means or methods of or what they may be uh, thinking in relation to the suicidal thoughts but instead thinking about perhaps the frequency that they're having these thoughts and most importantly, how you can support to keep them safe. So when we think about monitoring a patient that might have thoughts of suicide, we want to be staying um, arm's length with continuous monitoring and ensuring that they know um, that the nursing, uh, that as a nurse, you are available to help and support them and that you are there for them. 
It's also important to discuss why they might be having these thoughts, such as any major life events or relationships, as this can help you to help the patient to work through these. The candidate partially demonstrated using SOLA throughout the assessment. The candidate verbalized all the elements of SOLA, but the candidate did not remain relatively relaxed during the assessment and did not look comfortable throughout the assessment. By showing relaxation in your body language, you are showing the service user that you have time for the patient. It can also convey confidence, which can put your service user at ease as they feel they are being listened to, respected and well cared for. Your body language is very important in a mental health assessment, as if you're able to maintain relatively relaxed, this should help your patient to remain relaxed as well, or so nervous as well. So we need to maintain relaxed posture to show our patient that we're at ease and that we're ready to listen to them. It also helps the patient to feel comfortable with us as they can see that we are relaxed and comfortable with them. And hopefully this allows them to open up to you more and to feel calm and at ease. The feedback also details that the candidate was only able to partially demonstrate the solar technique through the assessment. So using solar technique means that we're going to be sitting at a comfortable angle, having open body language that's also relaxed, that we're listening to the patient, so allowing them to speak, giving them time to respond, which may include um, taking a pause and letting them think about their response or to consider that. Maintaining effective eye contact without staring, and this helps to build rapport with the patient. And again, re remaining relatively relaxed, as if you are able to remain relaxed, hopefully this helps your patient to feel relaxed and comfortable through the assessment. And if they're able to be relaxed and comfortable, the more likely you're able to perform an effective assessment um, and get good information from them for your, from your assessment as you're asking them questions. Medical Summer is back. Our all-inclusive summer tour of UK healthcare includes IELTS or OET for all healthcare professionals who need language training. Then if you're a doctor, you can learn about a GMC plan. If you're a nurse or midwife, you can learn about NMC, CBT and OSCE. We'll even throw in a few social events too, so you can experience the very best that UK cities have to offer, starting with our hometown here in London. Medics, our medical summer is a great experience and chance for you to meet other healthcare professionals from all over the world. What are you waiting for? Make summer 2022 in the UK your best one yet. Visit www.medicalsummer.com or call 0203 637 6722 today. The candidate failed to use appropriate questioning skills open questions. The candidate asked a very limited number of open questions. The majority of questions asked were closed questions. Appropriate questions is key to gaining more information and building a relationship with another person. Open questions allow a person to respond in whatever amount of detail they want. Clear and accurate communication by a nursing professional is a requirement of the Nursing and Midwifery Council, NMC code, of professional standards. A nurse is required to treat people as individuals and uphold their dignity as requirement of the Nursing and Midwifery Council NMC Code of Professional Standards. When you're asking your patient questions, it's best if you use open questions. So those are any questions where it wouldn't just have a yes or a no answer. So that would be a closed question, a question where the only answer the patient could give you is a yes or a no, such as, um, you know, do you feel sad? Yes or no. What you should do is use open questions. So that might sound a bit like you can see here in your um, medical notes that you're feeling down and depressed. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Or can you tell me what low mood feels like to you? Or how does it affect you? So by asking an open question, it's encouraging your patient to describe how it affects them and what it means to them. It also helps you to gather more information from them and it may even lead on to follow on questions because as they give you the information, it might uh, lead to follow up questions. If you're only asking questions that have a yes or a no answer, you're going to be very limited in the information that you can gather. 
And when you move beyond the assessment station to your planning station, you may then find it's difficult to write care plans as you haven't been able to gather enough information from your patient to know what their biggest problems are. So a good question to ask or to lead with when you get to the holistic assessment part of your assessment is, can you tell me more about whatever their problem might be? Tell me more about that. The candidate failed to build trust and rapport by demonstrating compassion, taking time, active listening and taking an interest. The candidate did not demonstrate taking an interest into the patient's responses to their questions. The candidate did not consistently use active listening and use directive language. The candidate tried to show compassion, but at times appeared to make the patient more agitated as they repeated questions that the patient had already answered. Building trust and rapport by using open questioning, active listening and compassion are important in a mental health setting to ensure patient engagement. Failure to do so can compromise patient's outcome. Failing to build trust, rapport, and discuss risks with the patient may mean that the correct care is not delivered to the patient. If you're asking open questions, it's also encouraging the patient to tell you how they're feeling in their own words. And that's helpful to building rapport and to building trust as well, as they feel like they're able to answer on their own terms. It's very important when you're using that active listening that you are showing that you're listening to them, so perhaps nodding throughout or some sort of affirming them as you go but it is important that you're giving them time and space to respond and it may just mean that they need to be silent for a moment as well just while they gather their thoughts and they get ready to respond you can show that you're taking an interest in what they're saying and that you're listening by asking those follow-on questions so if they divulge information to you or share how something is feeling for them it's a good idea if you can then ask a follow-on question to that as it shows that you're listening and that you're taking an interest in what they're saying it's so not just moving on to the next question as if you need to um, cover off a certain amount of topics. It's actually responding to what your patient is telling you. Another way that it's, it's also important to show the patient that you're listening by not repeating questions that you have already asked or asking them questions when they have already given you the answer. This could show the patient that you haven't listened to what they're saying, which could be harmful to building a relationship of trust and support. The candidate failed to conduct a holistic mental health assessment relevant to the scenario using the recovery model of care areas, including patient self-care and non-adherence to prescribed medication. The candidate discussed current risk, patient self-care, including lack of sleep and nutrition. The candidate failed to discuss relationships, major life events, living situation or adherence to medication. A holistic assessment of the person's internal and external environment is important to obtain in order to understand the issues affecting the person and to work with the person so that they can manage their symptoms and enable themselves to lead a full and meaningful life. It's important that you can be very clear about any risks that you identify. So in this example, we've been told that the patient was having suicidal thoughts and it is important that that is recognised as a risk the ongoing risk of suicide or self-harm if they are having these thoughts. So it is important that you verbalise clearly what the risk that you identify is and following that on with how you will help to keep them safe. So in this example, it would be continuous monitoring at arm's length distance. It's important to use the recovery model of care areas and that can include ways that the patient can self-care. So try to identify what they can do for themselves or what they might need support and encouragement with. But do try and also focus on what they can do or what they do well, not just what they're having difficulty with. It's also important to check if they're taking their prescribed medications as they've been prescribed. There'll be information in your scenario about the patient's relationships, perhaps major life events that might be affecting their mental state or well-being, what their living situation is, and if they're adhering to their medications. And these are important things to check as you go through your assessment. It will also help you to understand what issues this person may have in their life that may affect their health and their mental well-being. The candidate failed to discuss the findings with the person and close the assessment appropriately. The candidate discussed the PHQ-9 with the patient but did not ask open questions so was unable to propose a plan of action to the patient and did not close the assessment appropriately. Before leaving the patient, it is important to summarise what has taken place, assess the patient's understanding, provide an opportunity for the patient to ask any questions and discuss any follow-up plans. 
In preparation for the reset, the Royal Marsden Manual of Clinical Procedures, the marking criteria, equipment list and reading list on the test centre's webpage. It's important to end the station appropriately by telling the patient that's all you have time for now, but that you'll be back and certainly how they can how they can find you or how they can contact you if they need you. So in a hospital setting, this would be explaining them to how to use the call bell. And if it was in a community setting, it would be explaining to them the phone numbers they can call if they need the nurses or their GP, or of course, in an emergency to call 999. But when you're leaving safely, it's important that your patient needs to, knows what to do after you have left if you're leaving. It's also good before you say your farewells at the end that you can recap what you've discussed, perhaps covering the most important points and most importantly, what the patient can expect next. So what are the next steps or what are you going to do after you leave, if you're leaving? It's also a good time to ask the patient if they have any questions or if they have any concerns that you might be able to help them with. And that's all we have time for today. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next week with more Why They Failed with IELTS Medical.